it's Annalie again. Today, I'm in Edinburgh, speaking with Ed Seidel, who has spent his career working with black holes and supercomputers. And when he's not working with supercomputers and black holes, he spends his time skiing with me. Hi, Ed. Hi, Annalie. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, too. So, how did you get into black holes and supercomputers? Well, when I was a kid, I was inspired by the uh, space program, and I just thought it would be really great to do something with outer space. And so I grew up with that sort of a dream to do something that was related to the stars or to astronomy, computers, space flight. It was all very exciting. But you, you started with black holes, right, before getting into computers? I started with black holes before getting into computers. Yeah. When I went into graduate school, I, I was lucky enough to find an advisor who was an expert in the mathematical theory of black holes, and so I started doing that kind of work. Okay. And how do black holes, you work with supercomputers, so you simulate these black holes colliding or merging? Or? Well, all of the above, all okay. combinations, okay. and so there could be single black holes. And so what I discovered when I got into this uh, black hole thing was that the equations were just too complicated and you couldn't really solve them. And so you needed to find some way to be aided by that. Mm -hmm. So the instrument for solving complex equations is a computer. But five or ten years ago, when computers were incredibly slow and couldn't store much information, how, how do you do that now? What's changed? Well, what's changed is the computers get faster and faster every year. So there's a, a famous law of computing called Moore's Law. And this came up around the 1960s. Gordon Moore, who was the founder of Intel, realized that computers get twice as fast about every year and a half. So mm -hmm. in a year and a half, the computer that you're using will be twice as fast as it was okay. before. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but over a period of four decades, it means computers are something like a trillion times faster than they right. were, and so they get so much faster. Mm -hmm. And you need all of this computer power to solve these complex equations. Mm -hmm. Has your simulations on black holes have any, had any effect on computers we use? Oh, it does, actually. Okay. So the, the black hole work is one of the more uh, extreme kinds of mathematical um, calculations mm -hmm. that need to be done, solving those uh, black hole problems of colliding okay. black holes or something like that. So uh, they drive the development of the computer technology at the very high end in scientific computing. And that tends to be then over a period of time, it makes it into everyday uh, products that you have mm -hmm. your laptop, for example. Okay. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about these simulations. Um, it seems that there are met, uh, quite a lot of people in this field at the time. So how, how do they all work together? Well, they do. They work together, and they also compete with each other because it's oh. a very exciting. <laughs> yeah. It's a very exciting yeah. kind of field, and so it's a thing where you have to work with others because it's so complicated. You can't know everything you need to mm. know to solve one of these problems. And at the same time, you want to, so therefore you want to work with your colleagues, but you also want to be the first to actually simulate something or to find out something about the fundamental nature of science or about black holes in particular. Mm -hmm. And so there's this sort of spirit of competition mm -hmm. and camaraderie. People work together and at the same time they try to outdo each other. And so it makes for an interesting uh, mm -hmm. dynamics. How many people do you work with? Oh, I work with oh, dozens of people oh. at, at least. Yeah. There is some solitary research, but mostly it's working together. And mm -hmm. so there's an old saying about you, everything you need to know in life you learned in kindergarten. And that's very true. I think, you know, can you get yeah. along with people? Can you work with them? Okay. And those kinds of qualities about how well you work with people are very, mm -hmm. very important in science. How did you learn to lead a group that big and coordinate everything? Well. Interesting you ask, you know, you see, we're skiing buddies, right? right. We like to Definitely. ski. And I, so I didn't realize it at the time, but when I was in eighth grade, I was the organizer of my eighth grade ski trip. Oh. And so, <laughs> so I didn't Yay. think that that was going to be important in my career, but right. that sort of social organization turned out to be very important. Oh, and wow. it's, a, it's a sort of a natural thing that I like to do is mm -hmm. work with people, bring them together. And okay. then I, I was lucky enough to work in a problem in science that required a lot of people to work together. Mm -hmm. So. Imagine if you want to solve a problem having to do with a star that collapses to a black hole. Mm -hmm. You have to know so many things. You have to know about gravity. You have to know about, because gravity is a thing that pulls the star in. Yeah. You have to know something about the uh, heat in, the, in a star. You have to know something about the pressure. You have to know something about the gas dynamics, mm -hmm. how the gas interacts under its own gravity. You have to know something about uh, how you might actually compute that. You have to know something about how you might visualize the results mm -hmm. of your computations. Then you have to know about parallel computing. And there's no way anybody can know all of these things. And so you tend to get teams together that okay. work together. So do you have, in your team, do you have more people who uh, spe like specify in science or the computer aspect of it? 
Oh, it's kind of half and yeah, half. It's, it's probably more on the computer side. Of course, you have to have the scientists there. Right. Uh, but it's roughly, roughly equal, I would say. So do all the people in your team work from the same place? No, actually, they're all over the place. Uh, they're not just in Louisiana, but they're oh. in different places in the U.S. and also in, uh, in Germany in particular. So we have a collaboration with oh. people from all over the world. So how do they share their information? How do they know what the other others are doing? Well, there are a lot of things we do. So one of them is we just uh, put our results up on, web, on the web. And then we use web browsers to look at each other's results and so on. And we have these kind of networks like you have in Facebook, for example. Oh, right. we, we, we share information. We, in fact, I'm, I think I'm your buddy on Facebook. You are. Not? You are indeed. <laughs> um, so what's what's it called? Do you have a, do you have a name like Facebook? Or? There's nothing specifically okay. like that. We have wikis that we create specifically okay. for our own work. But, but so for example, um, the World Wide Web is the the fundamental uh, technology that we use, and then the the web browser is the key uh, piece that makes it easy for us to communicate with each other. Seems that a lot of people. Um, are interested in these simulations and it's a huge field now. Is there a Nobel Prize in the immediate future for these simulations? Or? Well, it was, it's been a very important development. I don't yeah. know if there'd be a Nobel Prize in it, but it's yeah. something that many people have wanted to be first at to oh. solve this problem of colliding black holes. Right. A lot of very bright people have been att uh, attracted to this problem. And now that particular problem has been solved in a sense of now we know how to write the computer codes that mm. can do the collision of two black holes. But there's a lot more science to come out of that. That's just the beginning. Mm.